Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Marty Feldman, section chair of the New England section, and I welcome you to our January. Yes, it's still January. It's January 31st meeting. And um, we are thrilled to have with us someone that we've had before. It was about four years ago over at WGBH, and that's Jim Jaquetta. And Jim is CTO and co-founder of a company called Vidovation. Um, and they make products that are designed for use on uh, cellular networks. Uh, they were very much involved in the uh, TV show on A&E for years called Cops, where they had many, many, many live feeds coming in via cellular and could go from one event to another. Uh, I understand that that program is now um, online somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but um, it's still using that type of technology. And uh, of late, uh, they've been more involved with things like uh, PGA golf broadcasts and uh, bass fishing. Uh, believe it or not, people want to watch people fish. <laughs> and um, many other you know corporate applications and uh, and other um, other tv applications and it's growing to grow it's going to grow quite a bit with the advent of more and more 5g which is uh, is only going to enhance the benefits of the technology um so um we thought it was time to uh with 5g coming on in many areas to talk about one of the benefits of this and um, and what it can do for broadcasters, say, in the area of ENG news and so on. So uh, I'm thrilled to turn it over to Jim, and he's going to take it away. It's all yours, Jim. Thanks, Marty. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me uh, off camera. And, and when Marty invited me to, to speak, um, I remember at the uh, uh, amazing pizza you guys had at the uh, uh, they were like 12 boxes of pizza, and uh, I got to say, it was probably like top three, top five uh, best pizza of all time. And I'm from New York, so I claim to know good pizza, but uh, uh, I didn't know Beantown could make a good pizza. We we can indeed. We can indeed. But you really should come back when we have our New England clam chowder. The chowder, uh, yes. Special Paul Beck. I was born in Manhattan, and I have no use for Manhattan clam chowder. If it, if it ain't white and creamy, it ain't chowder. Very good. Very good. Well, th thanks, thank you, Marty. Thank you, uh, Simpty New England. Uh, thank you for letting me uh, uh, have a chance to speak. So, as uh, as Marty uh, Marty. Uh, uh, graciously introduce you know we're going to talk about 5g technology we're going to talk about how it simplifies our live remote productions and broadcasts uh we're going to talk about private 5g what that means what that entails and how it it's already starting to benefit us in the broadcast media and news uh spaces so one one of the things that that uh vidovation has been doing for for seven, eight, nine years. Uh, let me back up a little bit. So Vidovation, uh, we do make a few products. We have some wireless products that that are made by Vidovation, but primarily we're a systems integrator. Uh, we're design consultants. We're resellers, uh, value-added resellers. So uh, when we talk about bonded cellular, uh, our go-to uh, there's certain go-to brands that, that we work with. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about tonight could apply to any any bonded seller. I know with Simpty, we got to keep this uh, vendor agnostic, right? So, uh, so what are what are some of the benefits? Or, or I think uh, one of the big accelerators for what we call at home production or uh, Remy production. Remy's remote integration. Uh, I think a better description is at home production. Uh, you, you, we we minimize uh, uh, the number of people we have to have on site, and we can uh, do events more quickly. We can deploy more quickly, and we save money. So the the PGA and others have been using the technology long before the COVID lockdown. But when we had travel restrictions, you know, the first slide here, we we couldn't have people in the field, uh, and then uh, many people didn't want to get on a plane. Uh, 
one of the big challenges too is like so you know in business we call it like a knowledge worker so in sports i'll use that as an example uh an evs operator you know the instant replay operators that's a very valuable or hard to find skill there, there's a limited number of qualified operators so the old school approach uh, a replay operator could do one or two events a, a, a week maybe uh he could sweet squeeze out you know monday night football and then the following sunday or maybe monday and thursday night football one or two events because they have to fly to the event uh you got to pay for hotel travel per diem for meals etc now with us during during covid at home production was doing the show at your home at your home studio now i like to do air quotes home home that operator is actually working from his house now is his where he lives so now uh, a replay operator that could do one or two games uh, uh, a week can do one or two games a day uh, depending upon the time zone you know if he's uh, he or she is on the west coast they could do an afternoon ball game and then do do the nighttime ball game on the west coast uh, all in the same day where physically that was not possible um this slide i i apologize if someone's truck is in this slide uh game creek or or nep it's just to make a point uh, the truck has not gone away but for some production the truck has gotten smaller so some of our customers will have a smaller truck on site for shading. They want to shade the cameras on site, and then they uh, backhaul or at home uh, transport it back to their studio. Or the truck is in a different location. So take the PGA, for example. Uh, they're using a lot of at home production technology from provided by Vitovation. Uh, they're building a new facility. It's almost done. PGA actually has contracted NEP to build nine more trucks. So the trucks are not going away. In the interim, while their building is being built, they're using the trucks in their parking lot as makeshift control rooms, makeshift. Uh, 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 so, so, so they had too many feeds coming in and not enough control room or master control capacity. So a truck in the parking lot is helping that. So, at SVG, a sports video group in December, uh, 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 Mike Davies from from Fox Sports, uh, Game Creek, NEP were on the stage as well, as well as others. The, the handwriting's on the wall. The trucks are going to be here for a while, uh, are not going to completely go away. Or they're just they're just moved to a different point of the, the process. So so today I I think a great use case uh, of uh, of uh, bonded cellular technology for at home production uh is work that we've done with the uh with the PGA and we're not doing the masters you know the masters the high level uh uh golf production is still done in you know for lack of a better term the old school approach or the tried and true approach uh vitovation we're doing uh corn ferry we're doing um uh, the the Amex uh, 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 tournaments, the the Q School tournaments. So what is that? If you're a golf person, you know uh, that's uh, like the minor leagues of golf. So so when you do well in Corn Ferry, if you win Corn Ferry, you earn a right to now next season or next next Masters uh, tournament to to to, to, to level up. So a lot of the content is going on NBC Sports or the Golf Channel. And, you know, with all the streaming platforms, everyone is craving uh, more and more, uh, more and more content. So, so Vitovation was instrumental. Uh, you know, we had the lockdown in March of 2020 and uh, uh, Vitovation and our partner, High Vision, uh, we helped the PGA facilitate bringing back the first live sporting event now it wasn't an official tournament it was a charity event but they got four golfers uh 50 uh the the local health authority said will allow 50 people uh um on on the golf course at one time and then a very cool thing was 
they did it at the Seminole Golf Club, and and that's a private club. Uh, one of the players' dads is a member. Uh, never had a public, you know, the public has never been allowed into this club. So there's no fiber optic circuit. There's no century link or level three or whomever you, you would want, you know, the traditional players, the switch, uh, don't have a connection in this, in this facility. Uh, they just had like, uh, you know, a consumer or business level internet connection that was not enough to, to, to run a whole show. And, uh, there was no budget for a satellite truck. And the PGA had already been using bonded cellular provided by Vinovation, and uh, it worked out really well. So I'll go into it. So uh, 50 players on site, uh, 40 golfers, 28 uh, people from the television crew. Believe it or not, with just four players, 18 officials uh, are needed, almost as many as as the, the production team. And in this particular application, it was a pretty close uh, 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 you know, uh, St. Augustine is where PGA HQ is. That's where what they call P gate. Now this is, uh, you know, a couple of hundred miles away. Uh, we do events where it's 10,000 miles away. It doesn't matter. We can go uh, around the corner or we can go 10,000, go around the globe. Um, and you know, the, 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 the technology uses cellular for the first mile, but then once the, uh, the cellular carrier dumps the, the 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 packets onto the public internet most of the transport is happening through the open internet uh one commentator was not uh didn't feel safe enough to travel on site to do color of the game of the tournament locally he did it from his living room uh uh they, they he had a camera in his living room we were able to send him a, a feed of the tournament and he did color commentation uh, uh, that was thousands of miles away and, you know, cellular, as we know, every six months, you know, Moore's law, right? Every six months, things get faster, cheaper, uh, 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 less expensive, but, it, uh, right now the, the state of the art is, uh, 300 to 500 milliseconds latency for cellular, but the, the network has to be able to tolerate that. Uh, typical rule of thumb is, you know, around a second or eight tenths of a second is typical. So, you know, the talent, if you're not on site, you know, say, you say, Hey, Mike, uh, what'd you think of that last putt? You know, one, 1,000. Yeah, that was great. You know, so you don't step on each other's uh, uh, toes and, you know, most anchors, most talent are used to satellite, right? So uh, that's a few seconds delay. So uh, they set up uh, two cameras uh, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the T box they had uh, two roaming cameras on the fairway and then two cameras on the uh, uh, on the green. Now, they only had four players, so they went out as a foursome. They played on the same, uh, uh, you know, they teed off together. So, you know, when they were done teeing off on hole number one, the tee crew would go set up on hole number two. You know, you, you can do that or the PGA uh, may not. They may set up on a certain hole. And then as players come through, they get airtime that way. It depends. I mean, it, it, on bigger events, we might have as many as 40 cameras uh, on the course, all over, all running over cellular. So uh, then there was um, a couple of units uh, grabbing beauty shots. So uh, this tournament, the club was near the ocean. So they had a shot of the ocean in the, in the sand dunes. Then they had another beauty shot of the, of the clubhouse. That was all worked into the production. Then they had a, a bunch of operators running around with boom mics, shotgun mics, parabolic mics. So you can see, oh, and then there was there was uh, microphones on the players. And then the receiver, the, the, the microphone receiver would be on the camera. And that would be fed into an external channel. So what Marty was asking me uh, uh, earlier today while we were rehearsing, you know, what are some of the differentiators or what do you need to look for when you're specifying this technology? So two things we learned doing this event. One, you need an audio channel for the top trace. You know, that red line that that follows the ball so you can see the ball. It's it's actually there's a couple of uh, different providers for it. PGA top trace is one of them. 
but it actually uses radar. The a radar tracks the ball as it leaves the tee, and and that's how they're able to to to, to track it. And it actually feeds telemetry to a graphical overlay back at master control through an audio channel, believe it or not. So uh, the bonded cellular we provide has two analog external audio inputs. I mean, obviously you could feed it into the camera. If the camera had uh, ancillary audio inputs, you could get it embedded in the SDI stream that way. Uh, PGA, I think, was using smaller cameras that don't have, uh, uh, you know, Usually, audio one and two are built into a little shotgun mic in the camera, left and right. And then, if it's a it's a bigger camera, there'll be a audio three and four. If you want to put a bigger mic uh, on your camera rig, so 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 the audio input came in real handy for the the ball tracking, the top trace, but also for the the microphones on the talent. How do we get that back to master control? So the receiver is is on the is on the bonded cellular rig. And uh, the live PD show that we did, uh, what happens if the player one is connected to camera one and they change battery? We actually have two receivers, diversity. So player number one, there's a receiver A and a receiver B on two different rigs. So if one goes away, they got a backup. So get pretty clever with, with, the, with the handling of the audio. Now, uh, uh, I don't, Marty, or I don't know if you guys can guess, I just want to fill the whole slide up. So uh, another video feed from an overhead plane. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Just this simple six camera shoot, eight camera shoot, we got easily 20 microphones open at the same time. And if we're not in perfect gen lock, those, those, 16 cameras and those 20 or 25 audio feeds what's going to happen you and this is live we can't fix lip sync problems in post production it's going to be a mess and that's a big differentiator in the solution that we provide the, the other bonded cellular that's out there is pretty good at keeping things in sync but what the tech that that vidovation provides has got it dialed in and that's the main reason why, or one of the main reasons why the PGA has standardized on, on, on our solution. So there, there's, there's two flavors of the product. The, the, the bigger unit mounts on the camera. It's called the pro. Uh, uh, these guys were the pioneers in putting uh, the unit between the camera and the battery V lock or Anton Bauer. Now they didn't invent that concept. I mean, they took a page from the, microwave transmitters right that's very common a microwave transmitter between the battery and the camera uh but these guys brought that to the to bonded cellular so that's another thing pga likes they got you know they can get on site the the camera can be in a pro port -a brace bag pull it out uh the comms are connected the video's connected even the batteries on there just got to pop the power on boom you're transmitting automatically then the 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 operators that are are not using video, you know, who would that be? Like the parabolic mic operator got a smaller unit. The bigger units have six or eight modems. Smaller unit has two modems in it. So uh, you, you you could see a boom operator uh, following the talent with the smaller unit on on, on, a, on his belt. Um, and you know, for audio only, the two modems is more than enough. This kind of gives you a slide of the of the different models. The 5G models only have six modems. Why six instead of eight? Well, the 5G modems are bigger. They just don't fit in the chassis. So, so the 4G LTE, you can get eight modems. Uh, 5G models have two have, have six modems in the pro. The little guy, you can have two modems either way, pro, uh, 5G or 4G. Uh so what what's happening? I mean, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with what bonded cellular is, what it what it means, what it does. Uh, uh, one of the protocols, you know, every vendor has their their unique protocol and has a name for it. Uh, SST is Safe Streams Transport. Uh, um, uh, 
the this technology also does a really nice SRT integration, which is nice. But you can see these lines, uh, 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 you know, bringing video through um, through the public internet, through the cellular. We're bringing that top trace signal I mentioned. We're also doing camera control. We can shade uh, cameras through the link. Uh, I have slides on that, which I'll get to. So here's a here's a nice picture. Uh, you can see the unit mounts between the camera and and the uh, 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 battery. Picture below it here. Let me see. Can I turn my pointer on? Yes, I can. So if you don't, if you have a smaller camera, see this this camera doesn't have Anton Bauer V lock, so you can put it in a backpack if you prefer. Uh, and then the 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 air uh, operator. See, there's like a sling. You can either put it over your shoulder or clip it onto your belt. Or there's a quarter 20 mount on the bottom. You can actually put it on an accessory shoe uh, of your camera and operate that way. So, you know, as I mentioned, you know, they were one of the first uh, uh, to mount on the camera, V-Lock Anton Bauer, uh, uh, one of the pioneers in that. You can see here, th this this setup here, this was like election night. Um, the, the camera operator is hearing intercom. Uh, this is a crew from like Sweden. So this is election night. I think uh, this was back in 2020, this picture. Election night, 4,000 miles away. He's getting cues from his director in the studio back in, in Stockholm. And and uh, uh, she's got a wireless IFB. So it's a party line. I mean, so she's hearing camera instructions. Uh, they're sharing comms. Uh, um, and and uh, we can even send program video back. You could, they could, we could even have a teleprompter for the talent, ten thousand, three thousand miles away. So this is a closed loop, and and they're getting, you know, with less than one second latency, they're interviewing people. Uh, this was in Times Square on election night. Uh, uh, this is uh, shows like the adapter cables to bring the analog audio in and out. The the big boy the flagship, the pro, and the small unit uh, both have the uh, analog audio inputs, which I learned is is very important. Uh, uh, it's I should mention it's it's uh, line level inputs. Uh, so here's some specs on 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 the the performance specs for the for the PGA event. I, I won't read the the chart to you. And and, and you see here CBR 500 millisecond latency. Variable bit rate. This slide is a is a good uh, three or four years old. Uh, so this is like three hundred or two fifty or three hundred milliseconds now, and about five hundred milliseconds for variable bit rate. So so every generation, every firmware update, that latency is getting lower and lower and lower, uh, getting closer. You know, ideal, right? We all want zero latency, right? That's the ideal. So uh, here's another event we did with Turner Sports. We did the Ryder Cup golf again. A um, little bit different application. This was using internet only, no cellular. Uh, I would have liked them to use cellular as a backup. They they rented a single uh, circuit from CenturyLink uh, for the event. And they ran um, uh, 20 cameras from the event back to uh, Atlanta, and then uh, eight cameras as return. You know, they send program, teleprompter, returns coming the other way, all through the public internet. And they they use the rack mount model of the product. And so the product will work. The technology works great just over public internet. You don't have to have cellular. Or if you have cellular as backup, you can bond the two together. And the cool thing is like, so if you're, you're, your uh, metro link or your LAN connection, if it's cheaper uh, or you're not paying per megabyte, we can set that as a higher priority. And the cellular, because as we all know, cellular data, you pay by the minute, you pay by the hour, it, it costs money. Uh, you can set the cellular as a low priority. And then if if your primary connection suddenly drops or hiccups, the cellular is there ready to take over the feed. And in, in this uh, 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 production, they chose to shade on site, so there was a there was a single truck on site. They ran the cam, they hardwired the cameras to the truck, or used microwave to the truck, and then uh, 
shaded the cameras and then sent ISO cameras back uh, uh, to uh, Atlanta to produce the show. Uh, this is the the live PD show that that Marty mentioned in his opening. So we were uh, 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 live uh, live PD was a lot like the show Cops on Fox. Well, it's, actually, uh, they brought fo- uh, cops back, right? Um, um, longest running cop show. Uh, production company kind of took the show Cops and copied it and just added the wrinkle. Let's do it live, you know. So for the excitement. Uh, everyone, you know, if it bleeds, it leads, right. You know, the old kind of ghoulish, uh, uh, news adage, you know, um, um, so, so they, they run the, the, the producers of the show, uh, big fish entertainment, uh, half moon productions were smart enough to realize what is a live reality TV show. A lot like, it's a lot like sports. So they hired they they hired a bunch of ex NBC CBS Sports, the director, the producer, the the technical consultant. Uh, a lot of the people came from uh, the sports industry, and and they dumped they dump the live video into an instant replay device. Uh, I mentioned the name before. I probably shouldn't have mentioned it, uh, vendor names, but uh, you know one of the one of the in, the the premier replay providers for sports. So what do they do with the show? I I was telling Marty, you know, Vitovation, me personally, and, and Vitovation, our team, we have a lot to offer our clients, but it's a two-way street. We learn new things from our clients, right? We uh, Hopefully you guys will learn something from me today, get something of value out of this. So I learned something. The FCC allows you to call a show live with up to a 29-minute delay. If it's a 30 minute delay, you can't call the show live. So the ISO, I, I, so I've been on set a couple of times for live PD and why are you guys starting the live production at eight 30? The show starts at nine. Oh, we got to fill the buffer, that 29 minute buffer. So they start, start, you know, they, they go live in the studio. So it's like live to tape, but instead of tape, it's to the replay. So it's live to instant replay. So they start filling the pipeline. And when the show premiered, they're like, oh, my goodness, what if it's a slow night? You know, I guess um, the perfect storm would be a full moon, a power outage in a city. You know, then there's guaranteed looting and mayhem. But, you know, some nights it's a slow night, you know, less crime in the winter than there is in the summer. You know, those kinds of factors. So they had a lot of B-roll ready in case there was dead air. And they the crews actually deploy with the officers all week to get some of that B-roll. So if they're like, you know, so they'll be like, okay, Officer Johnson is driving to the scene uh, of shots fired. You know, we're going to watch the guy driving for five minutes. They cut. Oh, so, so the crew was with Officer Johnson earlier this week and you know, you see him getting a cat out of a tree, you know, all those feel good kind of helping an old lady cross the street and then, okay, back to the action. There's shots fired. Ah, yeah. So they'll cut back to, 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 to the, to the action. But so they fill this 29 minute pipe with, with content because the PDs have last right of refusal for a segment to air. So what does that mean? So for example, officer Johnson doesn't read the Miranda rights properly. Oh, you can't hear that. We, the 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 Tulsa PD is going to look stupid. You got to cut it, or you got to cut the whole segment. So eight minutes of the show is gone now. So twenty nine minutes now is twenty one minutes. So I learned another thing. So there's live and then live live. When that twenty nine b- minute buffer has been eaten up because of people cutting out segments. A- another thing would be. Um, uh, an informant is in the shot and early on in the show, they didn't want to blur faces. I mean, there is technology where in that 29 minutes we could go in very, they can go in very quickly and blur faces, but then they felt ah, the, the fans won't believe that it's live. If we tweak the, the picture. So, so they would leave faces and like, Oh, that's an informant. He can't be on air. It, it, his life would be in danger. If he went on air, got a, you know, an eight minute juicy bust gone. So live live means there's no buffer. We we are live. We got to cut to something or have B-roll ready. 
But then, oh, we're live, live till the next commercial break. Hit a commercial break, you gain two minutes back, right? Because you're not you're, you're you're pausing. So while you're on commercial break, you're putting more stuff into the can, or or more more stuff on you know tape, uh, or or in the replay. So it's quite a, an interesting uh, uh, workflow. Oh, why? Oh, oh, oh boy. My PowerPoint is uh, not happy. She's crashing. Hold on. Uh, oh. Okay, thank goodness. Uh, so here, top left, what are we looking? Can, can you see me? Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, we can I can see it. I think so. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Yeah, it froze for a second. So top left corner. Um, I've seen this in in like NBA, the basketball, where feeds come in and they have interns or young, young, you know, people that know the sport really well, putting in metadata. You know, Shaquille smashes the backboard. You know, LeBron did this, and there's codes to put metadata in the feed. So these four people are monitoring four different cities or four different police cars, and and they're trained. You know, put the word G. You know, Alt G gun. Uh, alt D uh, drugs, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, certain codes like that. So that's the initial pass. Then a line producer is looking. You know, uh, uh, we, we got, you know, shots fired would be another another uh, uh, metadata. And so a line producer is looking at all that metadata, adding additional notes, and then they go, okay, I'm going to prepare a package for Tulsa. Shots fired at you know 803 timestamp. Um, I'm going to put it together a package from 803 timestamp to 815 uh, timestamp. Um, uh, ready package, roll, playback. Now, what does that mean? They do the playback from the replay recording like it's live. It uh, suddenly appears uh, as uh, the four or eight cameras uh, to the TD and director. And the, TD, the director goes, Okay, ready. Uh, uh, ready. Take camera one. Okay, ready. Camera two. Take two. Take. So he's calling his shots while it's playing back from tape. I mean, I say tape because it's uh, fr from the recording. He's calling the shots like it's live. Uh, uh, and then you know the 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 producer, the line producer, can be in his ear. Hey, at eight oh three, be be sure camera three's got the gun. You know, be ready for that. So so they 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 they, they have the. Uh, Hindsight, you know, so to, to to not not miss a shot, uh, uh, they know what's coming, uh, you know what what's juicy, so so that's how they do it. They they put it together in a package and play it back on the multi viewer on the switcher, so so they cut the show like it's live. So it's it's pretty cool. Uh, again, this is kind of showing the technology that that's being used. I don't need to repeat that. Uh, here's some of the functionality, some of the features, you know. You can go live. Oh, oh I'll, I'll tell you another story. I, I love stories. Um, live PD, it was literally a 45-minute chase. Uh, uh, I think this was like Tulsa PD chasing an enormous box truck, 80 miles an hour on the freeway. The box truck, uh, I think they blew the truck's tires out with um, the razor strip thing, you know, and it ended up in a cornfield, middle of nowhere. The cellular wasn't great in this cornfield, but we were able to be live. The, the 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 unit, the technology prioritizes audio. So the audio was pretty good. So the priorities are like control, you know, the thing, if the control channel doesn't work, the thing pulls apart. So control, then audio, then video. So the, the video is a little blocky, you know, the, the resolution. Uh, what the technology does, it compresses, but it also scales. So a, a crude form of compression is to go from HD to web grade video. Then we uncompress it and scale it back up. It looks soft as hell, but uh, it's still a picture. So it was a little soft, a little blocky. We had the audio. I happened to be in the control room and one of the producers like, oh man, that's the million dollar shot of tonight's episode. I wish we had a better quality uh, uh, you know, uh, version of that to air. And I go to the technical consultant, you're recording in our units, right? Oh, yeah, you record. So you see the record function. So during the commercial break, I showed the 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 uh, video engineer how to go into the unit and pull a video clip. 
So the cellular wasn't great. So it took a while to bring the file through, but we just took a clip. So we didn't need, we didn't need the whole file, just took the clip we wanted. And, you know, half hour later, bottom, you know, you know, we, you come back from commercial, they go to a different city. So, uh, come back, go back to commercial, come back again. Dan Abrams was like, Hey, you know, we were able to retrieve, uh, out of the camera, a better copy of that bust in Tulsa. Uh, we're going to air it now. And, you know, if they're being honest, they removed the live bug, you know, recorded earlier. Uh, 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 so, so there's ways to get around when, uh, when, uh, the, the cellular is not up to snuff or, or, uh, I'll get into, you know, private 5G, how that helps us with the with these, these types of problems. So there's there's different workflows. So I mentioned uh, uh, Turner chose to shade cameras uh, on site with a truck and then ISO those cameras back. So that would be the, the workflow on the left. Um, or or a PGA shades the cameras remotely and then the ISO cameras are sent back. Other customers will have like a smaller truck uh, switch to show kind of more traditional workflow, but then they don't have the budget for a fiber or a CenturyLink or the switch for, for, for a telco connection. So they'll use bonded cellular in the public internet to get the, the switch show back to master control, you know, and then there's hybrids, you, you, you know, of the above. So, so there's, there's many, many different ways uh, uh, to do it and, and, uh, remote control of the camera. Um, I mentioned, uh, uh, return, uh, video. So wh why is uh return video so important? So not all vendors do full motion video on the return. The, the, many of them it's reduced frame rate, uh, and, or reduced resolution, you know, so it's not full HD, uh, or it's limited to 720p, you know, uh, 15 frames a second, five frames a second. Uh, uh, the solutions we provide, it's full frame rate. And, and why is that important? Uh, we do a lot of with uh, college sports. And normally, the normal workflow when uh, uh, you're doing collegiate level, particularly, the replay the fans see comes from the truck. So the replay that's going on in the air is the same as the replay in the venue. Um, if it's a bigger venue or professional sports, um, there's usually several cameras at every camera's position side by side. So the broadcaster or the rights holder, I'll use hockey as an example. Sometimes there's three cameras in every position. Why three? One for the Canadian feed, one for the U.S. feed, and one for the house feed. Uh, you'll be like, well, Canadians speak English. Why don't they just use the U.S. feed? No, different rights holder. So there'll be a Canadian truck. There'll be a contracted truck in the, in the a truck bay for the Canadian feed, one for the U.S. feed, and then the house feed. So replay in-house is done on the in-house production crew. It's not done by the truck. But for college or smaller productions, replay is coming from the production truck. Now, we've eliminated the truck. We're producing at... at back at master control we need full frame rate full high res to put up on the big screen so if we reduce reduce the resolution reduce the frame rate and we're showing game replay you know that's only 15 frame you know frames or five frames a second it's going to look the, the motion is going to look god awful resolution is going to look, look god awful. so that has played a big factor you know having full uh resolution return so the 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 technology provides a uh for lack of a better term essentially a VPN between the unit in the field and the studio. So the it 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 extends the subnet of the studio out into the field. So you can even see here um you can have uh devices or we can bridge between uh these assets are on one subnet we can bridge in this in the bonded cellular receiver, the two subnets together, we can do an IP route. So why is that important for camera control? Now, one thing I've learned is, and some of you may be familiar with this, uh, camera control doesn't always like latency. Um, camera control, if it's going over IP, is meant for in-studio, you know, 
single digit milliseconds of latency. Now we're going out 10,000 miles, 3,000 miles. The the data bridge, as we call it, or the VPN connection, has about 100, 150 millisecond latency. Some camera control systems go berserk with that much latency. The camera thinks it's disconnected from the CCU and the shutter opens, closes, the iris goes berserk, goes crazy. So we've partnered with, uh, well, I, I won't, you can see a name here. I won't say the name, but there's and there's competition. There There's several vendors that uh, help facilitate camera control over an unmanaged connection, that being cellular or public internet. And what it does is the little box on the camera side mimics the RCP. It fools the camera into thinking the CCU or RCP is there the whole time and uh, keeps it happy. And then the RCP and the little box on the camera, they communicate and relay, okay, someone adjusted the green or, or the red balance, somebody uh, opened or closed the, the iris, somebody adjusted the black head, et cetera, et cetera. So it smooths out uh, the ability. Now there's tech technology that that will will simply convert from a serial protocol. So like older Sony cameras, right? They use that uh, proprietary serial connector. So we provide the 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 Sony serial cable adapter to come into a box like this and then convert from serial to IP. So. Uh, uh, we're able to virtually control 99% of the cameras that are out there. Uh, here's another example of the workflow. So two different types of cameras, like uh, the camera on the top can tolerate the latency, so we don't need this little blue box to fix the latency problem. So this PTZ camera just home runs through, it gets controlled. Uh, the Sony camera, we need to do two things doesn't like the latency, but we also like need to convert from serial to IP. Uh, so this box is doing both things. It's smoothing out the latency problem and converting from serial uh, or the Sony proprietary serial to, to IP. So this has been instrumental. And the PGA uses this technology with, with, with every tournament. Uh, so, you know, this slide just kind of shows you that, uh, you know, bonded cellular, we only, we oh, cellular, cellular, cellular. It will bond satellite, cellular, uh, any LAN connection, any IP connection you give it. Um, it's not uncommon that um, uh, customers at an event, someone hands them a cable. I think there's internet on this cable. Plug it into LAN one on the unit. We have HDCP turned on. If it gets an IP, it'll try to use it. Now, if the connection it gets is God awful, uh, and by God awful, no, actually, it's kind of contrarian. Everyone thinks it's megabits or gigabits per second that's the most important. Actually, latency is number one. If a circuit has latency out the wazoo, uh, we can't use it. Or it's the lowest common denominator. If other connections have better latency, we won't use the high latency one until it, uh, you know, cellular will do that. It'll spike up. There'll be a bottleneck and then correct itself. So that's why having diversity of multiple cellular modems um, so, you know, we play nice with, with, with any kind of, uh, uh technology. Then I, I kind of alluded to this earlier. So say your, your, your satellite feed is your primary, you set, there's a setting in the unit, set it to high priority and then cellular is a backup. Uh, we set that to low. Now, so customers be like, well, to save cellular data, I want to turn the modems off. Yes, that is the way to make your cellular bill zero, but I'll tell you why I don't like that. You're not going to be paying attention or you're not going to be quick enough when the cellular or the, the primary connection dumps and then the unit won't be ready and then you need a human being to turn the modem back on. You set it to low priority, it trickles some of the data. It keeps that circuit open. It keeps that connection open and it will only dump to it if it knows it's good. Uh, if that is also having a problem, it will find a connection that is okay. So you want to have all, you know, your even your backup connections kind of on low priority or warm standby, uh, uh, so so we can cut. You know, one experiment we do when we're doing demos, we'll put 20 megabits per second high priority on a LAN connection, 
and then all the modems are on low priority cellular, and then we pull the cable out. And a few packets at the transport layer may get dropped with that sudden shock to the system, but the transport is pristine. You know, the ARQ, the forward air correction, recovers the video and audio without. So, I mean, that's what we care about. I mean, when you're watching a transmission, you might see momentary packet loss. It'll show you packets lost in the overall transmission. And then there's the video. There's a number next to video and audio. And that's where we really want it to be zero. So uh, uh, it's just a testament to the technology. Uh, return video. Uh, each transmitter in the field can have one return video. If I have eight cameras in the field, theoretically, I could have eight returns. I could have eight different returns routed to different units or uh, return program one routed to these four cameras. A common thing is teleprompter, teleprompter these other four cameras. So, so the talent could actually be watching a program on one small monitor in the field, look waiting for their cue while the teleprompter is rolling. Uh, so, so that that's kind of pretty pretty cool uh, uh, use case. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you you can. Uh, a common thing is um, line producer wants to send a script uh, or check his email, his or her email, or you know communicate uh, or email the uh, master control. You can piggyback off the unit, use the unit as a Wi-Fi uh, access point to 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 get uh, computer connectivity. Uh, this slide's a little outdated, but uh, the the bonded cellular ecosystem we use literally supports uh, every protocol. Uh, SST is the Safe Streams Transport. Other vendors have their name for their bonded cellular transport. All right, so let me I'll I'll repeat what I said on this slide. So you you know this slide really shows you interop. You know we can basically we can interop with with any platform. We can send a feed to any master control as long as they have a, an SRT or one of these uh, uh, protocols, an SRT, IRD, or decoder. Uh, we can come in and out of the cloud via SRT, uh, whether that's uh, you know Grass Valley AMP or whatever cloud tools, vMix you might be using. So you, you can see here, uh, we're showing you can come in to the ecosystem and out uh, using, uh, you know, SST is the uh, uh, Safe Streams Transport. That's, you know, every vendor has their name for their flavor of bonded cellular. So SST, uh, it's now owned by the same company. So SRT and SST kind of go together. Uh, SRT is, jeez, uh, uh, um, what does that SRT stand for? Safe, reliable, transport, something like that. Uh, so the, the SRT, you know, de facto standard SRT is a common interop, but we support TS over IP, RTSP, RTMP, HLS. Uh, then, um, um, so the the receiver, the bonded cellular receiver is also, uh, I think, uh, it's it's your streaming hub because it takes streams in and transcodes and sends streams out. So sometimes customers even use this for non-bounded cellular needs. I need to convert a bunch of HLS video streams to NDI or vice versa. Missing from this slide is NDI, SMPTE 2110. Uh, so, so here you can see the, the bonded cellular receiver obviously decodes. You know, it's, it's a receiver. Uh, it records, but it also does transcoding. So you see there in the middle, uh, HEVC uh, transcoding to H.264. Uh, not everyone has this built into their box. Uh, you need external boxes. So why is that important? Or they don't have the transcoding capability, so we have to sacrifice. We have to lowest common denominator. We have to do 264 from the transmitter since upstream we don't support HEVC. So I'll give you I'll give you some examples. This is what I was... Uh, uh, speaking about when I was cut off. Um, actually, let me let me move your cameras over here so I can see you guys waving to me. Um, 
and thank you for 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 the visual. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so we want to use HEVC because it's more efficient, right? So if we're using cellular or a metered connection or a costly, uh, a per megabit per second cost connection, HEVC, we can get a, a better quality at a lower bit rate. But upstream, many providers do not support HEVC because of a licensing litigation. There's royalties associated. If we're using it to transport, I think all the licensing is baked into the chipsets. If we store it, if we manipulate it, if we're archiving in HEVC, or it just comes down to YouTube, Facebook is a big target for the HEVC uh, litigators to come after. So the, if, if we're coming in from the field H.265 or HEVC, we need the transcode in order to get up to Facebook or YouTube or something downstream. So that is a very, it, it seems small, but it's a very important uh, a feature that's baked into the product. Uh, then, you know, everything we can do in a physical server, the software will run uh, in the cloud. Um, um, any literally any cloud provider uh, that can spin up a, a Linux instance, it's Linux software. Uh, we can we can uh, we can support, and uh, you know we can do everything you can do in the cloud that you can do on the um, uh, on the physical prem, uh, except for a couple a couple of minor details. Uh, my joke is, uh, well, I'll take it back. I mean, I think we can do SMPTE 2110 in the cloud now. Uh, we can't do an SDI output uh, in the cloud. That's my joke. So so if you need an SDI in your workflow, you'd want a physical. But the cool thing is the 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 physical world can connect to the the, the, the cloud world. So one could back up the other. So there is a way you could do most of your production up in the cloud, but then if you needed... Uh, an SDI out for archiving or whatever back in the studio, you could have an SRT, IRD, or decoder and grab a, a feed off of the cloud uh, if you if you so so choose. Um, so yeah, so here's here's another look at all all the protocol. Oh, we do a WebRTC. So the WebRTC that's common in in gaming. It's a low latency codec. Uh, and protocol, uh, decent resolution is used in gaming. You know, if I'm shooting a bad guy in my video game, you don't want lag or latency. So uh, that's used for some of our um, live guests as a capability. So Marty, I want to invite you to as a contestant on my game show, but uh, we don't want to send a broadcast camera to your house to film you. Uh, we can use your webcam, your browser. You get an invitation, and it uses your your camera and your browser. You can even see program video in your browser, so you see uh, who you're talking to. Uh, and then we grab your 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 computer audio uh, uh, and your your video and bring it in that way. So that's a great way. You know, uh, the old way of doing that would be like with some sort of a Skype interface or Skype appliance. No one uses Skype anymore. Or that's rare. So it's like an alternative to that kind of Skype, kind of game show Skype workflow, bringing a, a an outside guest into the workflow. Uh, I touch this. This is a nice shot. Just kind of shows you what's going on inside the bonded pipe. Uh, you know, we got our PTZ, you know, our camera control. We can move video recordings in both directions. We can move, uh, we could have return video. Uh, uh, going the opposite direction. We obviously can go live, send live video through. Uh, IP, we can send, you know, I mentioned, you know, a hotspot having computers uh, uh, running uh, um, uh, uh, remotely and giving them internet connection. And then comms, intercoms. Um, so that's a great segue to um, uh, a related topic, uh, IP intercoms. So particularly during the lockdown, um, how do we communicate with each other? You know, if we're not all on site and we're not all with our intercom belt pack, 
that's provided to us when we're on site. We're at home. How, how do we patch in comms? So there's there's uh, there's a number of different players out there. There's some uh, there's there's a particular popular entity. I won't mention the name, but it's kind of a science experiment. You know, you take like a a MacBook Pro, put software on it, and you do intercom. Um, it's not an enterprise solution. Um, it's not fully a cloud solution. Um, so we we have intercom partners that we work with that have been doing cloud for better part of uh, 12, 15 years, something like that. And their cloud intercom or their IP intercom systems are being used by, you know, CNN, used by NASA, some mission critical applications. And so on, on the left, you see the server. The server could be physical. You know, some customers, uh, you know, particularly DOD, right? DOD would never put any assets in a public cloud. Um, cloud is really a data center in another building, right? Or a data center owned by somebody else. Uh, uh, if I have a data center in the in my basement of my facility, it's still kind of a cloud. It's just in the same building. Or if it's my building down the road. So uh, we can kind of build our own physical infrastructure with physical servers or VM servers or 100% cloud. And you see on the right, uh, the, the little graphic is showing, you know, a consumer phone, uh, a, a generic computer, um, you know, a phone phone. We can bridge into legacy intercom systems. You can you can use your your own uh, phone as a device. Um, and and you know, if you have a Bluetooth headset hooked to your personal phone, uh, there's an app you can download. Uh, to do intercom. So you can see here the blue little levers on the screen. You can mix how much you hear of a certain person. So like I'm the producer of a show. Uh, I want the director the loudest, the TD a little less, and then camera, you know, I want the camera operator. I want to hear him, but I want them. So you can kind of make your own party line or, or you know, if a, if a, if a box is lit up, uh, you see the little green button. You, you, that means I'm listening to that channel. But you can control the volume of those in, those channels in your ear. And then there's a talk button. Certain operators can only listen. Um, I, I've done some camera work at local churches. I've done some video engineering. They really don't want the camera op talking on the comms because there's there's uh, congregants right next to you. You know, like, oh hi, sorry, I missed my shot. You know, you know, in the middle of a quiet service. Uh, you know, it's the old adage, you know, you shake the lens, you know, Jim, are you awake? Yes. Are you ready for the shot? No. You, you, right. You don't, you don't talk uh, or, or two clicks for yes, one click for no, you know. Uh, 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 but, you know, so, so here's a, a picture of the ecosystem. So, you know, this shows a fully redundant server in the middle, but this could very well easily be the cloud. And we got, we can do SIP uh, uh, bridges. We can bridge to radios, bridge to to telephones. Um, one thing missing on this slide is your more old school uh, gooseneck uh, device with push buttons. You know, I, I punch who I want to talk to uh, with a with a gooseneck. So if you if you're a TD, I don't want to be messing with my phone or a tablet or a computer to do comms. I'm probably going to want buttons. So that you know, so 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 the we do interface. It does interface with what I would call kind of your more traditional, your old school uh, 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 intercom systems. But the people out in the field, mobile devices are great. And you tell your operators, bring you know, bring your personal phone. You don't have to buy them or rent them a piece of hardware. If they have a phone, Android or iOS, there's an app to download. Boom. They log in, they're, they're, they're connected. And, you know, we can do four wire, Dante, NDI, uh, pretty much S SIP, you know, to get into, into phone devices. So it's, it's very, very powerful. And it's a, uh, it's a very powerful uh, matrix. So uh, uh, it's used, it, it's kind of an unknown brand. I won't mention the brand, but you know, you can read it for yourself. It's pretty widely used. They, they don't do a lot of marketing, but you know, uh, NASA has thousands of endpoints that they use for
for their comms. CNN uh, loves this product, uses it uses it every day. And what's cool about it is it's it's as a service. You pay a small monthly fee uh, fee per endpoint. So a lot of productions are temporary. I, I'm I'm doing a bass fishing tournament for three weeks this summer. I don't want to buy software, buy hardware. Well, the hard if you if you're hooking intercom hardware to this, you'd have to buy that. But uh, you you have some uh, notebook computers, tablets, phones. Uh, you know, bring you know for, bring your own device capability. Uh, download an app for for Mac, Windows ios android you're off to the races and you're and you're doing uh you're doing intercom so 5g right that was the big buzzword you, you know we love to throw around it was in the title of this presentation so a real hot category within 5g right now is what we call private 5g or, or cbrs citizens broadband radio service so what is it? it it's a uh, it's a uh, 150 megahertz wide channel. Um, uh, uh, each each channel, is, and then there's um, um, it's called uh, uh, by the FCC or in the cellular sphere band band uh, 48. Um, and the uh, most cellular devices that are 5G enabled probably support it. So I, I have a, a 5G um, um, 5G uh, iPhone 13. It's an older model. I'm pretty sure it supports it. Uh, uh, if not, the, the newer units certainly do. And um, a lot of consumer devices from tablets, uh, notebook computers, if, if they're cellular enabled and they're 5G, they probably support this band. And I'll get into how you know how do we access it. Uh, very similar to how we access public uh, 4G, 5G. Um, but there, there's different uh, tiers of licensing. So the band was originally used uh, by the U.S. Navy, and the Navy uh, rarely uses it. Uh, the Navy, I believe, has right to use it in an emergency. So uh, I guess if World War III breaks out. And you're operating private 5G near a naval base. I'm not sure if we're going to be yanked off the air or not, but uh, uh, that that's a that's a, a discussion above my pay grade. Uh, you know, then there's priority access and general access. You can see uh, uh, that 150 megahertz uh, band from 3.55 gig to 3.7. We have uh, uh, access to it. And the spectrum is shared. It's it's divided up into slices, uh, and you know as we all know with modulation schemes, etc. You know we can get a lot more throughput. Uh, it, 150 megahertz seems like a narrow band, but we can get uh, a, a lot of payload. Some of the uh, um, private 5G radios we work with, we can do a couple of hundred megs up and down on a slice of this. You know, not the whole thing. We get a slice of this this channel. Uh, so, you know, so what what are some of the benefits? What are some of the applications? So, uh, public internet, Wi-Fi, uh, public cellular, three G, five G, five G public internet is lower latency than four G, but it's still got latency. Private five G is can be ultra ultra low latency. Um, we can set up where it's in a closed loop. So in other words, the, the private 5G connection never hits the internet. It's just going from uh, the access point to our data center and back. You know, we got an asset out in the field that needs to talk to a computer in the basement or in the data center. We get a low latency connection wirelessly, way faster than Wi-Fi, way more reliable than, than Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Um, much increased capacity. Uh, the private uh, 5G would be four times faster than 4G. You get uh, much wider coverage and higher reliability than Wi-Fi. As we all know, Wi-Fi is on a uh, uh, unlicensed spectrum. So, you know, it's the Wild West. Everyone, you know, consumer hotspots are clamoring for it. And, and you know, there's no... 
uh, supervision by the FCC, hence the term unlicensed. Um, uh, the, 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 the CBRS band or the private 5G is lightly licensed by the FCC. So uh, I'll get into, into some of the particulars. So w- what are some of the applications? So uh, it's used a lot in, in manufacturing or in warehouses for robotics. So th- th- think of this, you're wirelessly controlling some autonomous machine or robot. Uh, if the Wi-Fi cuts out or the cellular cuts out, the robot might go berserk you know, or hurt somebody. So we need a very high reliability, mission critical uh, connection. Uh, autonomous vehicles uh, uh, is another application, virtual reality. Uh, it's ideal for large indoor or large outdoor venues. So like uh, uh, convention centers, uh, sporting venues, indoor or outdoor sporting venues. It's ide- great for streaming video, uh, point of sale and life safety. I'll, I'll, you know, again, I love telling stories. So you're, uh, you're at uh, 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 Angel Stadium and... Um, you uh, have some life safety, you know, maybe security cameras, alarms, a public ad- emergency public address systems, and uh, you don't want to hardwire it. You want to go wireless. Well, you, if you put it over Wi-Fi, it's not going to be reliable. And particularly if you, you're using Wi-Fi, shared Wi-Fi with the fans. Um, I mean, you could you could reserve certain Wi-Fi channels from... Uh, from the fans, uh, segregate that a little bit, but it's not going to be that reliable. So, and then uh, here's a here's a very great example. Have you ever been in a ball game where the uh, nobody carries cash anymore? The credit card machine stops working at the beer concession, and there's there's a line of a hundred people trying to get their. Um, tr- I almost decapitated myself. Um, they're trying to get their um, their beer. And the point of sale is a credit card machine dies because it's running on cellular or it's running, you know, public cellular or it's running on Wi-Fi. So think about that. You, you know, it's not life threatening, but you could argue it's close, you know, revenue, lost revenue for the beers that they didn't sell. You know, those beers are, you know, what, a 16 ounce beer is like thirty five dollars, you know, at a, at a bowl game. That's some serious revenue loss there. So so running that point of sale over over the the private 5G is a great application uh and more than likely the the uh uh if if uh if the device is not private 5G enabled we have adapters converters to make virtually any any appliance uh um private 5G enabled uh this this slide's a little hard to read um yeah, so so you know, uh, so it's interference free. The the, the spectrum, um, it's a, a low latency, which is ideal. Um, um, you know, it it's very secure, uh, but there's a process, and I'll, I'll get into that. You know, how do we light this up? So this slide kind of shows you the uh, uh, the process. On the left, we have our our endpoints, our devices. So. Android phones, iOS, Apple phones, newer ones, 5G ones are are enabled. The the NF the NFL is a has been using for a while private 5G during games. So you probably see the coaches and trainers and players with Microsoft Surface devices on on the sidelines. Microsoft must be a, be a sponsor. Those devices are are cellular enabled. Uh, private 5G enabled, and they have a private 5G network at every arena, and they're pushing replay video stats. Um, um, they're giving the, them a, a solid networking connection to a device with 120,000 fans in the stadium wirelessly. It, it's kind of incredible. Uh, Many devices now have uh, e-SIMs. You know, the, the SIM is done, you know, electronically. You don't need a physical SIM. Um, so we would give you the SIM provisioning to activate a device, to join a given network. So that is the first line of security. you got to have this physical SIM or the SIM code and, and the uh, the access APN to get on the network. Uh 
but we we would program a sim with credentials to join a, a private uh 5g network then the top row here we have uh, uh you asked me marty about you know we're not going to forget about 4g they we do provide 4G LTE private radios, lower throughput, and they're not as fast. And you it, you can see, I, I don't know how clear it is on the slide, but there are access points that are very similar to Wi-Fi access points. There's indoor versions and outdoor versions. Uh, on the bottom row are the 5G uh, enabled private 5G uh, uh, access points. And the terminology is the same as we refer to a Wi-Fi access point. So IT won't get scared. Um, most Wi-Fi access points are running over power of or Ethernet or PoE. These devices do the same. So, so in practice, I could go into Dodger Stadium. Uh, a technician could remove a Wi-Fi access point with if it has PoE power, plug this in within a few minutes, boom, I have a, a pro, now I've converted that that access point to private 5G. Or I don't see uh, private 5G eliminating Wi-Fi. I think that I think the two will coexist. Public uh, 5G is not going anywhere. You know, we need that as consumers. And, and you know, uh, much of our technology can take advantage of both worlds or bridge uh, the two worlds together. So in the middle, what's this this server, this edge server? So what that does is, we recommend putting all the private 5G access points and assets on their own VLAN. So as long as the facility has one rack unit some available in some data center or IDF closet, uh, that's the physical connection or the VLAN connection to the access points. Then that server talks to cloud software that orchestrates the whole process. So the cloud server connects to the FCC database to see what slice of that private 5G spectrum is available at the given moment. Now, Marty, if you came to me and I, I got a client at uh, Madison Square Garden that's doing an event, they want to light up private 5G, we would go into the FCC's database and look at utilization at that address. Now, if it's at 95% capacity right now today, eh, maybe we need an alternative. Uh, private 5G is still pretty new. Um, if we see, you know, light capacity or less than 50% or there's a, you know, we check every couple of days and there's a good chunk available to use. You can't, the common question is, well, then, Jim, I see there's a, there's, there's 5% available at Madison Square Garden. Why don't I reserve it? Nope. You got to be on-prem, ready to roll. The hardware's got to be installed. You got to turn it on. So once the access points are powered up, the edge server is turned on, we're connected to the cloud. Then it goes out to the FCC, and the edge server has to have a GPS input. So we 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 it makes it very hard to spoof the FCC that we're in a location other than what you, the FCC knows where we're lighting up, so they know we're at Madison Square Garden, and then they're like, okay, uh, channel number thirty two is available to you. You got it. You're 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 lit up. Now the cool thing is, once you're connected, don't turn anything off. You own that slot that that channel that slice until you power down you power down somebody else might jump in now you power down because you don't want to leave things running there might be fees associated with that etc or it's a temporary thing you know you break down set up um you fire back up you might get a slightly different slice but the radios the access points the the end devices can grab what you know it's part of the process though they, they can work with you know uh, slice one, two, three, four, you know, we, we can, it's, it's part of the, it's the beauty of it. So the only negative though, is if, um, it gets maxed out. So if you're going to permanently install this at angel stadium, you're never going to want to shut it off or, you know, change uh, one, you know, keep, 
in the in the clouds uh, a side of it never never take it down keep it going keep it going so uh some of this is just another lo- way of looking at um um uh, uh you know dicing the same thing you know you got the endpoints the access point you know the devices the access points the server in the middle the orchestrator or the management software out in the cloud um so so yeah so so the 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 cloud is setting up the service with the fcc or we're getting permission from the fcc uh it's uh limiting or turning on and off access you know if if we wanted to revoke the sims or the the whether physical or digital the the e-sims we could, we could, you know. So if some, if a user comes back, they're locked out next time. Uh, you know, so th- this is some of the command and control, uh, uh, just a different way of, of looking at it. So this is a cool slide. So on on the right is is an example of a bonded cellular system that can connect to it. So with bonded cellular, uh, the units typically have uh, six or eight modems. So what we do is we don't, we don't, we put a, a private 5G SIM. These devices still use physical SIMs. So we would uh, designate one of the SIMs, uh, one of the modems for private 5G by putting the private 5G uh, SIM in there. And then you're off to the races. It, it'll take as much bandwidth as we let it from the private instead of the, instead of the public cellular, or it'll bond the two together. So uh, in a maxed out stadium where public cellular may be a straining, this can help us stream video reliably out. And you can see here, you know, consumer phones, ruggedized devices, tablets, the, the um, NFL, I believe is using Microsoft surface tablets. Uh, uh, Notebook computers are enabled, or if you have a device that's not enabled, there's these little dongles that you know, like like your old cellular dongles. There's a private 5G cellular dongle you connect and, and make it go. Radios have the private 5G built in, and then uh, we we provide little gateway devices. So in my example, like at Dodger Stadium with the beer point of sale. Say the beer point of sale only has a, a Wi-Fi connection uh, or a LAN connection. We put a we'd hide a little router behind the the cash register to to bridge from uh, the local network to the private five G network. So so there's ways to get uh, legacy devices on and off of this private five uh, G uh, system. So this is another way of looking at it. So in the venue or close on the venue. Uh, your devices could use the private, your your bonded cellular devices could use the private 5G where the crowds are, or or that's the primary. And then if you're out in the parking lot doing some B-roll, some tailgating, uh, public 5G is probably going to work away from the fans outside. So the two can coexist. Um I guess I should ask, I didn't put it, uh, I'm going to do a little promo for a, a webinar we have coming up a uh, week after next. But before I do that, maybe, uh, does anyone have any any questions? Let me see anything in the chat. I, I did have a quick question on uh, private 5G. Uh, it's compatible with consumer cell phones. Is there, how does that handshake happen so that that consumer cell phone isn't connecting to a public tower versus the private is there an yeah app yeah so so most most phones uh you know for international travel reasons and other reasons can have more than one sim associated with it so say i was a, a traveler in europe a lot i could have a, an active sim uh, uh new phones now i think the latest iphones don't have the the mini sim slot anymore it's all done digitally so you would have to key in the the digital SIM information into the phone and authenticate it to gain access. So that's part of the security. We we flash. Well, if it's a physical SIM, we actually flash the SIM. We you know there's a prom 
uh, on on the sim so we program the sim uh so if it's an older device we you can stick it into into it if it's a digital sim we we give you those credentials so theoretically uh if you go into your uh, cellular connection setup uh you should be able to activate uh, what we call an e-sim or an electronic sim so as, as long as your phone has that ability you should be able to connect and then obviously the the radio has to have uh support that band 48 uh and most 5g radios now i, I believe do support that so yeah i think everyone uh right they, they can unmute themselves right if they want um so feel free if there's other questions yeah and what about proximity to towers and node sites um we heard a lot about 5g having very short range and needing many more uh received transmit points that's uh that can be true um the the 5g uh that's out there now is sub six gigahertz um the the millimeter wave 5g has not been deployed we've done some proof of concept tests with verizon and, and other carriers with the millimeter wave um um if uh I don't know about Android, but uh, well, I, I can't see it with my phone in the case. But uh, on the um, right hand, well, it depends how you're looking at the phone. Right hand side of the iPhone, there's a gray little kind of window, like like a plastic, you know, like a, a, a an opening with a gray cover over it. Um, if you Google it, that supposedly is a 24 gigahertz millimeter wave connection now millimeter wave is highly directional and won't go through a human body so with me holding my phone the palm of my hand would be where that port is so i don't know maybe it's meant when your phone is is resting in the stand or something um who knows it might be uh uh fiction uh, on the internet you know i've never taken the phone apart to see what's in there but uh but uh, yes, you're right that that um, higher frequencies uh, give us higher capacity, but it's a trade off the distance. And then uh, the lower cellular bands go through walls much better. The longer wavelengths will go through, you know, foliage, walls, windows, trees. The higher frequencies, uh, even glass, higher frequencies just bounce off of glass. They they don't. They don't penetrate very well. So, um, you know, that may be a part of the reason, too, why large open spaces is ideal for this, that that it is uh, it is using the upper part of the uh, sub six, six gigahertz range, and we get tremendous throughput. But uh, if uh, there, there's a wall in the way, uh, concrete, wall we're probably not going to get much signal through that wall if any so th those are the factors you know um anything wireless that we do whether even if it's microphones microwave um um private 5g uh we encourage the customer to send us a drawing of their facility you know we'd like to know where existing wi-fi is just to you know if we have a product that might products that might interfere with each other or something that might be susceptible to interference from Wi-Fi. Let's say this has no this technology has no no susceptibility to Wi-Fi interference. But uh, um, you know, some of our microwave radios operate, our wireless radios operate in the five gigahertz band. So we need to frequency coordinate with IT, make sure they allocate some of the five gigahertz band for video uh, transport use. So, uh, wow, we're going going pretty long here, guys. Uh, you, you, my record, I think, is two hours once. <laughs> well, we're we're into Q and A anyway, so yeah, yeah, that's the best we're part, right? The, we're in the coda, as it were. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Any, any other uh, any other questions from the the, the team? What about what about um, uh, resending packets? Is that done at all in this? Um, at that level, I'm I'm unsure. Uh, you know, so at the physical layer is the is the private 5G doing some 
retransmission. It may very well be doing that. Uh, I'd have to, that's a good question. I'm, I'm curious now that you bring that up. I asked the factory guys. Uh, from our perspective, all our video over IP transport, whether it's bonded cellular, SRT, or or any video over IP, is doing some form of forward error correction and ARQ automatic re-request. So if uh, our transport that we're putting on any network, whether it be private 5G, public 5G, public internet, or a local network, uh, if we lost the packet, we would uh, 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 do ARQ. I, I, I think most radio technology just in general might have, you know, some minimal forward error correction uh, enabled so so they can, um, um, you, you would think that, you know, FEC is so common, I suspect, I, I would speculate that they, they're at minimum that they got something like that. Mm. uh running uh, even lightly running you know you lose a few packets here or there then they're able to 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 recover you know automatically in the uh in the early days there were a lot of uh, uh things like rtp over udp and things like that, that that had no return packets in order to reduce latency and that sort of thing so i was wondering you know where where that is these days yeah yeah um one of our microwave uh, vendors uh, has a very cool product. It actually, uh, the 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 technology mimics bonded cellular, but over a microwave connection. So most microwave camera back systems, some have bidirectionality, but it's just for camera control. Uh, uh, I won't name names, but uh, one of our preferred vendors actually has a very robust return pipe. They can send two return videos, one for program, one for, for teleprompter. Uh, they got uh, intercom, both directions, and camera control. And because they have a very robust bi-directional radio, they're the only vendor I know of on a microwave link to an ARQ. Mm -hmm. So the competition just maximizes FEC. I mean, if you do, you know, 100% FEC, basically you send two, two, two of every packet. You know, you just... You're you're using you're using up the pipe on redundancy. Bonded cellular systems and this microwave vendor that I'm alluding to, uh, the forward error correction is dynamic, because if you're if you're unnecessarily aggressive with forward error correction, you take away you take bits away from video quality. You know the the payload uh, suffers. So if you have FEC set at 100, percent you're sending two of every packet. So say you have a 10 meg pipe, now I only have five meg for video because I got FEC at you know, 100. Uh, if I have FEC at 10%, well, I'm sending a 10% overhead. But what if the circuit is clean and, and, and I'm not dropping anything, but because I'm not, traditionally you're not two way, you have the, the decoder or the receiver has no way to tell the encoder or transmitter, hey, lower your FEC, uh, uh, we, I, everything's fine. So in a closed loop system, the decoder or the receiver can tell the encoder, you know, lower the FEC. Uh, if, if, if there's a sudden drop, I'll do an ARQ re-request re until we can turn FEC back on. So yeah. there's that, uh, I think the, the dynamicness of this technology uh, is another big differentiator, whether we're talking about uh, the brand of bonded cellular we use and the uh, brand, one of the brands of, of uh, microwave. So it's, it, it's fascinating stuff. Uh, we do a lot with wireless. We do a lot with bonded cellular. Um, so uh, anybody. So we do, do have a question. Oh Jeff. yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, had a question on uh, how about web RTC for video shading? from the RCP to the camera? Um, oh, using web RTC to do the shading? Is that is that the question? That's what the question is. How, okay. how do you use, or can you use web RTC for video shading from the RCP to the camera? Um, let me think about that. So, so the uh, th there's there's two vendors of uh, uh, of shading appliances that that we provide. One of them you saw in some of the slides. I, I won't name names, but 
the devices were actually introduced uh, uh, to work over Wi-Fi or a single cellular connection. The, the, the field device will actually take a USB cellular modem with just one modem. So you can't bond. So if you have an AT&T modem in there and you're in an AT&T dead spot, you lose shading. So we connect that to the to the um, the bonded cellular unit to give us a bonded VPN back. Um, I'm not sure what protocol uh, the device on its own uses, you know, when it's going over Wi-Fi or cellular. Um, I, I mean, they're not moving video, so I, I would think... Uh, uh, web RTC may be a little overkill, uh, but I don't, I don't know. Um, I, it may just simply be, you know, TCP IP. Um, I, I'm not really sure. Um, again, you know, it, it, it prompts my curiosity, you know, you, you questions like, Hmm, well, what protocol do they use? It'd be nice to know. Uh, so sorry. I, it's kind of a muddled answer there, but, uh, 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 that's fine. I, I, Thank you. Yeah. 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 I can get back to you on, on more details. Jim, is there any uh, any room for co FDM in this whole in this whole uh, amalgam of uh, um, you know as there is in ATSC three O for example? Um, so there there one of our vendors has an interesting Coftum radio that has uh, a five G capability. Um, I'd have to look at the data sheet. The fact that it's 5G radios, I, I would venture that it 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 has hooks or support for the uh, the private 5G or band 48. So um, it's kind of a novel approach on the on a, a mic a microwave radio having bonded capability. So the same appliance could work reliably short distance line of sight from the field to the truck. But now uh, my event next Sunday, there's no truck. So now the same appliance, I can go back to master control. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a newer device, but it's an interesting concept. Um, I don't believe the technology is such where it bonds the microwave and the cellular together, but I don't see why it couldn't. Uh, my, you know, Coptum is usually point to point, you know, the, the camera to the truck that's nearby. But that, that's a great uh, uh, question, Marty. Any other uh, questions for Jim? I just had a very quick question. Uh, is Starlink ever uh, part of the equation of the of the bonds that you're seeing out there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um um, well, when when my circuit dropped out, I'm like, "What? I have triply redundant internet." So my cable operator, I'm at home uh, right now. Um, it, it's just quiet here. I, I do mo most of my webinars at home just because it's quiet. Um, um, I have Starlink as a backup, um, so I have Cox Cable, and I, I kind of live in a rural. Believe it or not, California does have some rural, or Orange County has some rural areas. I, we're, we're kind of at the end of the line, you know, we're at the, uh, you know, um, the uh, local Cox Cable uh, supervisor gave me a cell phone number. I'm sure he regrets it. I'm constantly calling him like, eh, I dropped out again. So I, I just have Starlink as a backup. Now, now during um, uh, prime time, you know, you know, early to late evening, um, the, the, the satellite's going to get saturated, but during, during, um, uh, business hours, uh, you know, during the daytime, it's a great backup. So, um, you, you know, I have multiple, I, 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 my machine here, I, I, I have, um, multiple NICs. So one NIC is connected to my cable modem. I'm hard lined, uh, into the, uh, Starlink. Um, but you know, from a, from a bonded cellular appliance standpoint, you just hook the Starlink to one of the WAN ports, the LAN ports. And uh, it, it will use that bandwidth if available. Now, granted, that bandwidth is going to have higher latency. So uh, at, at least the, the devices that we represent, they intelligently make a decision. Now, if there's no other bandwidth available, it will use a Starlink. Um, we might have to play with the latency 
uh, you know, if the Starlink has got, you know, 500 milliseconds of latency uh, running our unit at half a second latency is probably not going to work. You know, we probably have to run at one second, 1.5 seconds. So, um, but if we have a combination of Starlink and cellular and the cellular has much lower latency, you'll just see it stop using the Starlink, you, you know, because it's trying to, to find the most efficient connection. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely compatible. Um, and uh, Starlink, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. You can get uh, a device for your home, but it's got to be tied to an address. You can get it for your business, got to be tied to an address. And you get more, more throughput. Then there's an RV subscription where you're allowed to move it around. So a lot of broadcast crews will have a Starlink or several Starlinks in their kit on an RV subscription. So they're allowed to move it around. Uh, you you have lower priority on the network than a you know than a fixed uh, install and the um, the the business or or professional uh, it's a phased array it's like three times the size of the consumer one I got a consumer one on my chimney it needs clear view of, of uh, semi you know I'm in Southern California so it needs a little bit of a northern footprint it clears all the palm trees in my neighbor's yards so i have an unobstructed so it moves like it 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 picks up a satellite on the horizon you know 20 minutes 30 minutes i've never watched it do a complete cycle it moves slowly tracking tracking and then when it loses a satellite on on the opposite horizon uh the, the it picks up one rising nearby and and comes back um, I've never, you know, watched it, uh, supposedly it hands off between satellites without dropping. Um, uh, I've, uh, I've never tried to stream video through it, you know, for 12 hours or long periods of time, but, um, for testing purposes, it's worked great. Um, these are all great questions. So I, I appreciate it guys. Jim, what about uh, the 5G interference with aircraft um, altimeters, radio altimeters, radio altimeters? Yeah, there there, there was a, a scare, right? I, I think they closed down LAX uh, for a few hours. Uh, Verizon or someone lit up some public, uh, some private, uh, no, public 5G towers. Um, I think that's all been sorted out. Um um otherwise you wouldn't be able to use the technology but yeah you're some of the landing uh uh guidance systems were were on an adjacent frequency or whatnot um another uh speaking of the fcc and aircraft customers often want to take the technology up in a helicopter and if you follow the letter of the fcc's outdated rulings you're not allowed to do it. And they actually, the reason why they're out there, in the early cellular days, if a radio got line of sight or it's got a signal from more than one tower at the same time, you could actually crash the, the cellular network. The technology is smart enough that if I'm in the air and you turn a radio on, it'll grab the closest one, won't crash anything. I think it's also been proven that. Um, the cellular does not interfere with um, uh, um, uh, navigation systems inside the aircraft. There are cellular repeaters that are in, you know, commercial and private planes. So I, I think the the rules need to change. Um, I think part of it, Marty, was this uh, Verizon. One of Verizon's bands was near the navigation band. So I, I think um, one of the, you know, Ver, Verizon has been lobbying with um, the FCC. Hey, we promise not to use that band near airports. You know, allow us to use the technology in planes legally. Now, that, that doesn't say customers do it anyway. I know news agencies, police departments, they, their legal department looks at the, the rules. They, they have a, 
RF frequency experts give their two cents, and they're like, "We're putting bonded cellular in the in the helicopter." Uh, they do it all the time overseas without 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 incident. So, uh, uh, so one thing one thing I've heard is that it has to do with the age of the equipment too. That earlier uh, aircraft that's equipped with some of the earlier systems are more affected than newer ones. That would make sense. That would make sense. And you know, we have to adhere to the lowest common denominator, right? We don't want to crash. Uh, but yeah, it, it, this is this is fun stuff. So uh, any other questions, guys? Anything else for Jim? So Jim, I want to thank you for making the return visit to us. Uh, this was really, really informative and uh, raises a lot more questions. <laughs> and maybe yeah, yeah, we could go all night, right? <laughs> maybe they can get in touch with you directly with those, and you can get back. To yeah. Us. And, yeah. Uh, uh, also, uh, yeah, you had. I see you bringing that up now. That February fourteenth live uh, uh, webinar that you're having workshop. Yeah, it's a it's a cinema cinema grade robotic camera. You know, everyone in sports now wants the cinematic look. Uh, even churches, uh, 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 you'll see a, a Komodo dragon or an Ari camera. Everyone <laughs> wants red, red, red. And, and then these cameras were not designed for a broadcast workflow. Right. So this is a line of robotic cameras that we picked up. So we're having them as a guest on a workshop on the 14th so if you, if you visit our, our website you go to i think about us and then events you can find the uh, registration page hey, then uh, you know marty t told you all who we are you know we're systems integrated consultants uh, project management warranty support and then uh, here's my contact info this is my my work email jimj at vitivation.com you got our company phone numbers on here, 949-777-5435. So, uh, oh, I got to change the copyright date. Look at that. Oops. Uh, <laughs> any uh, any uh, questions you guys have or any projects? Uh, uh, Marty and I, uh, yeah, Marty called me up uh, a month ago. Hey, I, I might have a project for you. And uh, how would you like to do, do, do another Simpty meeting? So, uh uh, maybe Marty and I, if, if his customer can find a budget, right? Maybe Marty and I will be doing a, a project yeah, we'll, soon. We'll, we'll talk about it, no question. Um, <laughs> also, I, I just want to plug what we may have coming up next month. We hope we're going to have um, something on uh, camera matching and adjustment and use of uh, uh, scopes and so on and, and working with uh, and doing all of that and using things like uh, chroma Dumont charts and so uh, how to get how to get better uh, quality of service out of your existing cameras and um i can't tell you too much more about it right now but i hope hope we can pull that out for uh, for february if not we'll do it later but uh, watch your email and uh, we will be having uh, uh, it's very possible that we will pull that out and be able to have that in february uh, something I've wanted to do for a while. It's an interesting subject uh, to me anyway. I, I, I'm really interested in. Uh, now, I will say that a lot of cameras are matching much more easily in auto when you pull them out of the box, but it's still not the same thing. So uh, there's, there's still a lot to learn about that and uh, talking to some experts in that field. So so hope you'll uh, watch your email for the things that we have coming up. And uh, uh, we'll have some elections coming up. We're working on we're working on all of that right now. So uh, if anyone wants to run for anything, um, throw your hat in the ring. We'd we'd love to have. We can always use more help. So uh, again, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you for those of you that are recording this and making this available. Uh, this will be up on video on demand and. Um, uh, we also give it to uh, Simpty headquarters, and uh, they might decide to do something with it. So, uh, so again, Jim, thanks for being with us, and um, we hope to have you again. Keep us informed of anything new, and we'll do. Uh, we'll, do. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking. So, good night, everyone. Thanks again. Thanks, um, everyone. Thanks, Marty. Yep. Take have care. A good night. Yep. Have a good night. Good night. Bye bye. bye, -bye.